Guys, my, my name is Jay. Um, as you guys all already aware now that I started my automotive uh, career uh, sitting in a classroom just like you guys here at Automotive Training Center. Um, back in 2003, um, I graduated from high school um, in uh, February, so I had a job between February and uh, like I was always working, but I ended up starting the program at Automotive Training Center. Uh, that program started in June of 2003, and uh, Virgil was our instructor at the at the end when we did our electronics uh, section uh, for computer uh, diagnostic and um, all the underhood electronics. And, uh, and then we did our uh, final exam preparation. I did the exam. Uh, the best part for me, what happened through Automotive Training Center was I was able to land a job uh, within three months of um, going to Automotive Training Center. And that helped me huge to a, get into a shop, start learning, and also go back to school and apply those um, teachings that I learned from school uh, into the workforce. Uh, I've worked for a lot of multiple sh small shops and I've also worked for a few dealerships. I worked for Chrysler and Toyota. Um, I really enjoy working in the aftermarket side of the uh, industry. Um, it's a little bit challenging. You have to stay you know, on the edge on, on the, the latest and greatest stuff, all the failures that are happening with certain makes and models. Um, yeah, like if automotive uh, wasn't there for me, I don't know if I would have the same level of uh, success that I'm currently enjoying in my, in my life, in my career. Um, I own Ocean Park Automotive with a business partner and I'm also getting started on Ocean Park Auto Sales. That's the second business that I'm working on as well. So it's coming to the point uh, where we're gonna be hiring progressively. And I just wanna make this connection here with the Automotive Training Center because they gave me this awesome opportunity and you guys got the same opportunity. And if there's anything I can do uh, to help you guys excel in your careers and also uh, if there's an opportunity that you know we can work together. Um, you know, uh, I will be conducting a few interviews by the time I leave here tonight or today and uh, and then I'll invite a few of you guys back for a second interview um, at our facility. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can shoot along or if you guys want to hear more about my experiences, how I got to becoming an owner of a repair business, um, I can share anything with you guys. So then you guys have any questions? No? Yeah. So at the moment you guys have two facilities, one in White Rock and one in Surrey? No, we have one repair facility and then we're, uh, I'm starting up uh, uh, like a sales side of things as well. Okay. Yeah. So is your repair one in Surrey? Um, yes, yeah, in South Surrey, it's on King George and Crescent Road. Okay. Yeah, and then our, we're starting that at the same facility and then I'm, uh, once we get enough staff fully trained uh, or at this facility that we have right now, I'm looking to expand and that there'll be obviously more room for uh, more recruitment and more work workers, right? So where do you plan to expand past your, your flagship in Surrey? Um, yeah, that totally depends on market demand and as long, long as we have the right crew that we can bring with us, um, it, the opportunity can be anywhere, right? It's just the automotive industry is such a, a niche market that uh, you know all these cars are everywhere. They're not just in Surrey, they're not just in Vancouver, they're worldwide, it's a worldwide industry, right? And, um, and it's totally up to the individuals who like how far they wanna go in this automotive career as well, right? Any other questions or? Yes, Eugene. Can you tell us what it would be like to be hired for your company and what the next three, four years would be like? So uh, like when somebody gets hired with us, our main thing is training them on uh, inspecting vehicles because when we, when, when we get an opportunity to look at a vehicle, that's an opportunity for us to find work and also uh, we gotta make sure the customer is safe on a car. A customer doesn't know, um, you know, between bad tire and a good tire, bad brakes, good brakes, and all those components. So as professionals, we have to bring all of these things aware to the customer when we get an opportunity to look at a vehicle, right? And it's also like, you know, it's our due diligence and, and the care we provide for, for customers. So the, the key would be to, you come in, you do the basic services like fluid changes, oil change, um, and then uh, learning to perform that inspection well. All of our inspections done, done on a digital, digital platform. So it's a digital inspection and uh, and then as your skills and your confidence grow, um, we can like have you take the steps 
a lot of the times, um, like we can, we allow our, our staff to kind of grow in the direction they want to grow in, right? And the, um, I had a gentleman that, uh, he didn't do a pre-app, but he was in, a, uh, in the automotive industry for, for a long time. So he was mechanically very inclined and he didn't have the option to do the apprenticeship. And so I ended up getting him in touch with um, high tech training. So they do all the diagnostic training and uh, Dave Hertubis, uh, um, Virgil probably knows of him. Uh, you know Dave Hertubis? Yes. Yeah, so he, he did a little bit of like the like the higher end <coughs> electrical training. Yeah. And uh, so I helped him get his red seal uh, through doing that and then doing the refresher course at BCIT. And then he challenged the exam and he passed and he's got his red seal, right? There's a lot of other ways um, for you to learn. You don't have to be confined by the apprenticeship program. Uh, but you still have to, at the end of the day, learn and and build yourself so um, you know you're a positive influencer when you're at any shop you're working at, right? That's the biggest key. And then, um, like, we can if I if I don't have a media position for somebody, we have so many connections. I've been working in the industry for over 20 years now. Um, like, I have a great relationship with a lot of the shops, a lot of the dealerships in South Surrey. And I can, uh, if I don't have a room for you guys, I can help you guys get that job too. How, how important is the uh, being time? Maybe explain to us a little bit the attendance and time. Attendance is huge because, um, you know, um, now, like, as a, uh, uh, everybody's rolling with an appointment, everybody's busy in their life, and when somebody, when we book somebody to come into our shop, like, we have to have able bodies to work on that vehicle, otherwise we're not gonna be able to meet our deadlines, right? So punctuality is key, not just in, um, it's in all aspects of life, right? So if you're, if you're supposed to be at a certain time, you have to be there. And, uh, and I expect the same thing from my customers as well. If they schedule an appointment, <coughs> they have to be there. If they're not there, um, I give them three strikes the first time I'm not booking them in, right? So it goes the same way, then we have to be held to the same accountability as well. They can, they can do a practicum in your places and when they when the time comes but yeah of course the practicums uh, uh, like I, I like to Just give to know to know people and know the, the students and yes stuff, right? yeah 100 yeah. percent like okay. um, practicum uh, is like an entry level to get a job like I always encourage people to go get do a practicum uh, when you're or you like you should be interviewing the business when you're looking for a practicum you should be asking um, will I have an opportunity to get a job here if I spend six weeks here or however length yeah. of the practicum is, right? Because you don't want those, like, if you take that six weeks and you go somewhere and you show them what, you can, what you're capable of, but they don't have a job for you, you just wasted your six weeks, right? So you have to always do a practicum where they allow you the opportunity to get employment. Last chance for questions. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to know more about my journey, how I ended up as a shop owner? Mm -hmm. I can bore you with a story. <laughs> okay, so um, I started working out at a little shop. It was a, just a one owner shop. Uh, one of, like, he's the only guy working there called Surrey Delta Transmissions. And it was actually not too far from where the college was on 180 or 84th and 123. So the shop was on um, 124 and uh, 82nd, and it worked out perfect for me. I would work there in the mornings, uh, come to school at nighttime at uh, 5 or 5.30, whenever that school started. And um, it was a transmission shop, so I wasn't getting exposed to a lot of uh, mechanical work. So after working there for eight months, I, I knew I, was in, I wasn't excelling, I wasn't learning anymore. So then I had a chat with the owner and I said, hey, I don't think this is the right type of shop for me because all I was learning to read and read transmissions. So once you do that, you know, 10, 20 times, you get pretty good at it. And uh, then I got a, an opportunity to work at a shop called BP Auto. Um, that was one of the best shops I worked at to learn and grow and become a, um, you know, troubleshooting technician, I would say. And um, even with that, I kind of got capped out at, you know, I was like the lowest, um, or position to technician at that facility. So I got every job that nobody else wanted and it wasn't, you know, after a couple of years of that, I, um, I kind of fell out of love with that place and I went to work for Canadian Tire for a year and a bit. That's where I finished my apprenticeship. 
uh, but Canadian Tire at that time we were seeing too much of a repetitive work and um, so then I worked with Surrey Delta again and um, uh, in a kind of like a partnership deal and it didn't work out well for me that, um, doing that it's just um, I wasn't ready for that opportunity at that time so I left being there after six months and then I went to work for a shop called um, Apollo Mufflers in Vancouver and the only reason I got a job there was like I knew how to weld and I learned that welding from Automotive Training Center so Les was our instructor and he was a phenomenal welder I picked up a little bit of welding tips and tricks from him but like you know once you start practicing um, you know you get better at it right and I worked there for three four years and uh, then I got an opportunity to do work at Ocean Park I met Steve he was one of the managers there and he ended up opening up Ocean Park Auto and um, he hired me and I worked with him for a bit and uh, and then Apollo Mufflers brought me back as a manager so I worked there for another six to eight months as a manager uh, then you know we kind of um, hit a recession back in uh, 2010 or 08 and then it was really started affecting us after the Olympics and that's why I basically um, left my job working for them and then uh, I did a couple of dealership um, tryouts kind of thing I went for work for Chrysler um, I didn't really like working there and uh, I really enjoyed working at Toyota uh, again I worked at a piece of Toyota in uh, Surrey now it's called Open Road and um, they hired me when they had that brake pedal not the brake the gas pedal issue and uh, so they were really busy doing a lot of recalls so I worked there for about uh, just under a year and then as uh, soon as the um, the reports came out that there was no issues with their pedals. It was um, just a technical customer error, and uh, they st their work started slowing down, and then uh, uh, they laid me off. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, other then I worked at the, but uh, it was a Minitune shop. I was making like half is what I used to be making, uh, but I needed a job to make ends meet, and. Uh, uh, I didn't really enjoy working there. That uh, shop owner uh, kind of trashed on my confidence and I didn't get, get to do the type of work that I was experienced and capable of doing. And uh, then I went back to Steve and I said, Steve at Ocean Park Auto, I said, hey, I need to get my old job back. And then he hired me back again. And uh, two months later, he passed away. And then his wife ended up selling him the shop. And that's how I ended up having my own business. And uh, it took us a uh, while, to, or even after being in business for, for two years, um, somebody else bought our building and they put us on the street. They're like, get out, uh, we're gonna put somebody else in here. They had a clause to do that in the lease. And uh, then we were lucky enough that we made a deal with uh, White Rock Sports and Import and we took over his shop, he retired. And uh, we've been there for over eight years and I have a great uh, long-term lease there. So we're good, we're good for a while. Hmm. That's how I ended up being a shop owner. Yes, Eugene. As an employer that hires uh, mechanics, in that interview, what what's stands out for a good hire and what stands out for somebody that you don't hire? Um, it's just gonna be the eagerness of the individual, like like how they wanna grow. If they express that they wanna learn and grow and, and they're motivated and um, you know they wanna work, um, you know, that's the person that I usually always consider over uh, you know somebody answering all the technical answers and um, and uh, um, you know like the, if people like I, I'm, I'm not gonna consider somebody who doesn't show us like great interest right uh, interest is a huge in uh, um, in any career if you're passionate about what you're doing like come on guys we're working on cars and, like it's pretty fun it's uh, like uh, for me when I go to work I can be there for 12 hours a day and I won't even notice the time just gone by that, that quickly, right? Uh, my kids play sports and I like, sometimes I have to leave early and it just like, like we're so ramped up. It's just like, I have a hell of a time just getting out of the shop. Hmm. Yeah, yes. So at your shop, um, we're able to get our hands on a little bit of everything on the experience side. Um, yes and no, like I'm never gonna bring you in and just give you a timing belt job right off the gate, right? We're gonna give you, um, you know, whatever, like if you're experienced with stuff, if you say, hey Jag, I'm confident doing brakes and I can, I'm confident doing suspension, right. I'm gonna get you to, um, I'm gonna give, allow you that opportunity with like another supervisor. Okay. 
and uh, so if you perform that like there's gonna be always somebody working beside you yeah. so that person can keep an eye out on you but if you're asking like multiple times every nut and bolt you're going back and forth uh, then the guy's gonna come up to me and say Jag I don't think this guy's ready for that type of work yet then we're gonna you know scale you back down a little bit uh, um, our biggest key is just making sure that you're confident at what you're doing and when you're confident uh, nothing else matters like you know you're gonna figure it out and if you apply yourself and you want to learn there's always all that available there's always YouTube videos the industry has changed so much since when I got into it like everything was just getting electronic so like all that and all that stuff was just like brand new uh, and some shops didn't even have it we were still handwriting invoices at some, shop, some shops right and now everything's all digital like you can um, watch a video on pretty much anything and uh, change. yeah it's a huge change so um, it's a it's a it's a good opportunity to, like um, there's lots of information out there everything's more technical as well so um, you know it's uh, all I can recommend is just apply yourself as much as you can and that's you the more you build yourself the more uh, knowledge you're gonna gather and, and the more money you're gonna make because uh, face it this industry is a performance based industry if you go outperform everybody in the shop you're gonna be the number one tech virtual knows he's done that in his career right um, if you do the job in half of the time, your boss is gonna always uh, keep you longer than anybody else. Right. Right. So. so. Can you tell me a little bit more about the wages as well? Wages is totally dependent. Like uh, again, it's performance based, right? So like uh, technically, uh, we like starting off people anywhere from the eighteen to twenty hour hour range, right. and then basically we go from there. If you wow me, then you know we can always talk. Wages is one of those things that my shop is always negotiable. Like long as you're willing to put the effort in, and um, and I have no right to hold anybody back from what kind of like potential they have to earn, right? Mm -hmm. So if somebody's uh, like motivated and they want to work and and learn and and there's steps that you can do, there's commit like a bonus system that we can implement. Right. There's a lot of flexibility with that. It, it totally comes down to the um, after you pass your probation, um, then it's just like you know you tell me what you want to make and I I can. Uh, sit down with you and explain to you what you need to do for me and we can make those kind of arrangements right awesome. mm -hmm. does your shop work on a flat rate system at all no we're we're a, like a straight time uh, but like uh, the flat rate is there if somebody wants to challenge the flat rate then we can work their uh, bonus structure off of flat rate right so any other questions guys a lot, of, a lot of repair shops are going away, even the dealership level now, like um, like BMW, Audi, Mercedes, they're all on a, like a hybrid system where you're paid um, uh, basically like a salary or an hourly wage. But if you're like the guy that can just crank the work, uh, they give you, um, they'll, they'll incentivize you and then pay you uh, retroactively on your er like earned hours. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, no other questions? Let's just give Jag a hand.